Please be seated. Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Good morning, Fort Massey. Welcome to worship. My name is Sharon Ballantyne. My pronouns are she and her. I am the intentional interim minister serving Fort Massey United Church here in Halifax. A special welcome today to all visitors, to the, those joining us in person here in the sanctuary and online. Thank you for choosing to be with us, where everyone is welcomed, needed, valued, and belongs. It is Sunday, June 25th, 2023, and it is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Cliff and I would like to extend our thanks and appreciation for your prayers and messages in our recent illness. My perfect attendance of not having missed a service due to illness since being ordained in 2006 has now been broken. Oh, but we're on a new roll, right? We're, we'll see where the next you know, couple of decades go, so it's all good. Thank you to all who proved again the, the value of Village working together. And with a special thanks to David Griffiths, who did a great job of taking the service at the last minute last week. Whether you have come today seeking solace, inspiration, community, we invite you to be present in this moment to connect with the divine however you experience that and with one another to embrace the spirit of unity and love. No matter where you are on your spiritual journey, know that you are welcomed here. Together let us celebrate the beauty of diversity, the strength of resilience, and the power of unity as we worship the holy, which weaves us all together in a tapestry of love and grace. Let's open our hearts to God's abundance for love for each one of us today as we receive what the Holy offers to each of us. I invite Jenny now to play some quiet music as David comes forward to light our candle. If you have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now as we all hold the light of Christ in our hearts. God welcomes us as we come from many directions geographically emotionally spiritually we light the christ candle inviting us inwards seeking christ's light and love god welcomes us as we welcome those around us we light the candle for our community seeking to offer welcome kindness compassion and gratitude as we share Christ's light and love to all. We remember the words of Christ, the light of the world who calls us to be beacons of hope, healing and reconciliation. Christ's light shine. We acknowledge the land upon which we gather in, and the indigenous peoples who have stewarded this land since time immemorial we recognize that our worship space is situated on the traditional territories of the Mi'kma'ki, and we extend our gratitude and respect for them, for their enduring presence and care for this land. We also recognize the lands and first peoples of wherever our virtual worshipers are. We honor the diverse ministries, cultures, spiritualities of the indigenous peoples who continue to shape and enrich our communities. We commit ourselves to the ongoing work of reconciliation, healing, and justice, walking alongside indigenous peoples with humility, empathy, and open hearts as we worship and celebrate together. Let us be mindful of our shared responsibilities to protect and nurture the land, to honor the wisdom and the resilience of indigenous peoples, and to cultivate relationships re rooted in peace, friendship, respect, understanding, and unity. 
In doing so, we contribute to a more inclusive, equitable, and compassionate world for all. May it be so. Please join me responsibly in the call to worship. The words are in your bulletin and on the screen. We gather as followers of Jesus Christ, seeking to be a loving, growing family of faith. We offer a cup of water to each other, to friends and strangers alike. We gather with a party of love, so much love. We gather to worship and praise God. Now, as we settle more intentionally into this time of worship, I invite you to be comfortable where you are, feeling grounded with the earth beneath you, connecting with the spirit in whatever way you name and understand it, opening yourself to whatever spiritual expression connects you with your sensing and knowing of the divine. As we breathe together, we attune ourselves to our shared rhythms of breath, breathing in God's presence and releasing all tension and anxiety, anything that distracts us from connecting with the divine. I invite us to just breathe it in and let it out into silence. Welcoming, nurturing God, we come, parts of us thirsting for your refreshing waters, part of us ready to offer a drink to those in need, ready to give. Energize us with celebrating hearts. Welcome us in all creative and giving ways. Help us to discern the way we need to love and serve you today. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. As we prepare to sing, you're invited to stand or sit according to your comfort, knowing we all rise in spirit. As we sing, feel God's love poured out as a healing stream. We are singing... Like a healing stream, more voices 144, and it will be refrain, verse 1, refrain, verse 4, refrain, I think. Uh, 1, 2, and 4. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. I did that. That's for the last one. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> verses 1, 2, and 4. Like a healing stream. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fort Massey. My name is uh, Carol Robson, and uh, I would invite everyone to share a sign of peace with those around you. Today, we'd like to give our thanks to Jenny Trites, our music director at the piano and organ, to Jay Fraser, our soloist and the choir, to Colleen Estabrooks, our scripture reader, to Allison McDonald, our usher, David Griffiths for jumping in to do the PowerPoint at the last minute, Cliff Ballantyne, our videographer, and to Kathy Evans, Allison McDonald, Colleen Estabrooks, and Anne for hosting a coffee and conversation. And we're very pleased to welcome the Women Next Door Choir as our special musical guests today. Announcements were in Thursday's newsletter and printed in the bulletin. Here are some of the highlights. So please stay after worship, if you can, as we gather and connect together before Fort Massey closes for worship for the month of July. Everyone is warmly welcome to join St. Matthew's United on Barrington Street during the month of July. Beginning August 6, we welcome St. Matthew's congregation to worship with us in the lower hall of the month of August. And in the case of a pastoral emergency during July, please contact the Reverend Betsy Hogan, who is the minister at St. Matthew's. Thank you to all who supported yesterday's bacon book sale. Additional baked items and books are available for a goodwill offering following the service today. The Peninsula Youth Group will be holding an end of year celebration today from 5 to 7 p.m. at St. John's United Church. Church leaders and parents are invited, as well as any interested grade six kids who might be involved next year. There will be food, games, and a chance to see the new pollinated garden that the youth fundraised for and planted. If you would be willing to advance PowerPoint or video the services in August, please let Sharon know. Tamara is on summer break for July and August, and the church office will be closed from June 30th to September 6th. And we have several July birthdays to celebrate in advance, including Nancy Riggs, Trent Cleveland Thompson, Carrie Robertson, Brady Nord, Gwen Smith Dockwell, Carol Robinson, Ian McDonald, and Viola Greer. So our best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations. So please join together, standing according to your comfort, as we say our new creed, our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We, believe in God. we, believe in we believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone, thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol, and we, I'm sorry that my fault we missed putting down a birthday. Happy birthday to Jade tomorrow, and today is Jade's final day with us before her move to Italy this week with her family, but they'll be back on Christmas break, so all our best wishes and much love to you, Jade, as you head into the new life of Italy. We'll miss you, but look forward to joining you online virtually and staying connected. At this time, I'm going to invite David forward to share the story of First Steps in a New Community, which comes from our local ministry, the Brunswick Street Mission. Thank you. 
Halifax. Isolation, fear, and uncertainty. You can give dignity to those who are trying to get their feet grounded while facing the challenges of navigating a new life in a new city. Every week we register new Ukrainian families for our food bank. They've just arrived in the city and often they come with a friend or family member who has registered with us weeks earlier after they have just arrived. And in our breakfast room, our outreach worker sits with guests every morning to hear their stories and learn their needs, looking for opportunities to provide support. Two days ago, she sat with a man who had arrived from Ukraine only a week ago. We don't know yet how he learned about our free breakfast, but she did ask who he had been talking to since he arrived. And his reply to her struck me, just you. They chatted for over an hour, likely this first full conversation in Canada took place during a free breakfast. You make these connections possible. Hunger is increasing in Halifax. That's why our priority is to provide food for people in our community. But your support can also provide more than food. The Brunswick Street Mission conversations at breakfast are a gateway to providing other supports critical to well-being, counseling and advocacy, our ID clinic, laundry facilities, and of course, our food bank. So here's what your donations today is, compassion, dignity, and a first step in a new community. This work can't be done without you, and you can lift someone out of their crisis. And if you wish to donate to Brunswick Street Mission, have a look at the website, and if you're not sure how, Thank you, David. Our sense of community expands in the stories that we hear. Through our offerings, may we continue to build a world where love, justice, and compassion flourish. Reflect on our abundant blessings and gifts. We are invited to share our blessings with others. The act of giving is not only about financial resources, but also about sharing our time, our talents, our heart. I invite you to imagine or pretend to hold the offering plate now as we give and as we receive. The offering will now be received. Let us pray. Gracious creator, source of all blessings and gifts, we come before you with gratitude for the abundance you have bestowed upon us. We dedicate our lives, our minds, our hearts, our gifts, and our resources for the ongoing work of healing, reconciliation, and unity to foster understanding and mutual respect among all peoples as we work together to build a more inclusive, equitable, and compassionate world. Bless us and these gifts as you use us and them to share the message of your great love here and throughout our world. In your holy name we pray, amen. Our time for a young and young at heart. This morning I want to tell you a story about the rainbow crow. The rainbow crow was a beautiful, a 
and colorful bird. It lived in a time when the world was always warm, always bright. But one day, winter arrived, bringing cold and snow, and the animals in the forest were suffering. They decided to send a messenger to the Great Spirit to ask for some help. The animals chose the crow because of its beautiful colors and its sweet voice. The rainbow crow set off on its long journey to the Great Spirit. It asked for help explaining how the animals are suffering in the cold. The great spirit listened and gave that rainbow crow a stick with fire on the end. The rainbow crow thanked the great spirit and returned to the forest. And as that rainbow crow flies back, the heat from the fire stick caused its beautiful feathers to turn black, and its sweet voice becomes hoarse from the smoke. Despite these changes, the rainbow crow completed its journey and brought fire to the animals, saving them from the cold. The animals were grateful for the rainbow crow sacrifice, and they learned the importance of selflessness, of courage, and helping one another. I think the story of the rainbow crow also reminds us that we all need to love and care for each other, not judging others. As you get ready for your summer holidays, remember to be kind and to wish people a safe and healthy summer. This week, draw me a picture, write a story, or do some creative art about the rainbow crow and send it to me. Remembering always that Jesus' message of love is to love every single one of us. All the people, all the lands, all the creatures, and all of creation. It is filled with beauty and wonder. Let's do a repeating prayer together. I'll say the words first, and you repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for courage to help others in need. Thank you for the ways we give of ourselves.
staying at the festival. Well, we hope that you will continue to feel like Fort Massey is your safe space and your home, and we look forward to a long relationship that you will continue to feel welcome here to practice and to come join us and share your music at any time. And we look forward now to these next two songs. Thank you so much. Singing, singing for 
Amen and Amen. And as always, music touches our hearts and souls and moves us beyond what the spoken word can convey. Thank you for your gifts of music, for your time with us. We are so blessed. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you, O God, our life force who offers true welcome, sending us all as disciples to share cups of water. In Jesus' name, amen. Even a cup of water offered as a gesture of loving God we are all sent. Think about the nudgings that we receive from God for our actions and how we respond. How do we love others? How do we love God? Last week, David shared the story of the party church that named every room and purpose with love and celebration. The story concluded with the chairperson who came in to criticize, to judge, who was closed and judgmental, and not understanding the need for abundant, intentional inclusion, love, and gratitude. But hearts are changed. And as the story concludes, the committee person stepped up to the table and sliced a piece of birthday cake took a bite and laughed out loud. He began slicing and passing it out. When the wine was poured and the hands were held, the chairperson raised his glass and said, there's so much love to celebrate. Happy birthday, church. Commentator Alejandro Duarte writes, the gospel is rooted in real lives, relational interactions, human need. In this statement of giving a drink of water, Jesus privileges the marginalized and reorders societal hierarchies while encouraging compassion, generosity, and hospitality. Matthew presents a radical Jesus who liberates through practical acts of meeting human needs. Simply put, Jesus is telling the disciples, then and us now, go and live welcome. Don't give lip service. The emphasis is on action, activity. In three verses, Jesus uses the word welcome six times. It's an active verb that speaks of hospitality and service. Commentator Stanley Saunders summarizes, welcoming, which is at the heart of every relationship in these verses. Jesus is not merely pointing in a general way to the importance of welcoming or hospitality, already an important value in the communities in which he ministered, these acts of welcoming come at a cost that surpasses food, water, and shelter. They bind those who offer welcome with those who are welcomed. You may recall a few weeks ago when Jenny shared that every community of faith in our area all say, they are welcome, but do they mean it? Are we really living into that brave space to ask our questions and explore, to create the safe space where all people might come together freely with their partners and loved ones and families, those who've been rejected and hurt, those who are feeling renewed and hopeful in possibilities, that we can all come and be together reaching out in true and genuine welcome. These acts are not one-off events, but constitute the defining features of mission, 
generating social settings where God's way is articulated, discerned, and yes, some people will accept it, some people will reject it. Barbara Brown Taylor's message on this text in Bread of Angels reminds us that churches are not some special group, not some inside place to gather, but it's a place to come together to go out to offer the cups of water, to look at our own lives and how we choose to live each and every day, how we encounter people we know and don't know, how we welcome the stranger, what difference we make in the generosity of our hearts and the seeking to recognize that we are whole, we are beautiful, we are one, all created in the gifts God gives to us. Yes, we feel confronted sometimes, but sharing our love and compassion is at the heart of who we are. We are the providers of God's love. Where might you offer water this week? The water that will burn out the fires of anger, jealousy, envy, hate, entitlement, harmful judgments, hurt, pain, destruction. We know those all too well. But we need wholeness, the beauty and the wonder and the gifts of humanity coming together in love, singing a message of love, living a message of love. Where might the at water this week that quenches our deep thirst and desire for love, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, empathy, understanding, listening, acceptance, peace, all be offered. We yearn to have those expressions of who we are more enlivened in and through us that all might see that message of more love. On Wednesday, the United Church of Canada, embracing the spirit, highlighted a pastoral charge, Cowan Heights United Church in St. John's, Newfoundland. They face the same challenges coming out of the pandemic back into in-person services as other mid-sized communities of faith. But their minister, Oliver Dingwell, heard a message loud and clear from a congregation that was tired, tired of not being able to sing together or even pray in unison. We want to be able to do something together and a new curiosity around faith and why faith causes people to do the things they do prompted the community of faith to take on a spiritual practice not common in the tradition of the United Church of Canada. That is celebrating communion every Sunday. The act of sharing a simple meal of bread and grapes juice during worship took on what Dingwell calls a surprising and wonderful life. Are you living a surprising and wonderful life right now? He said that within a short time of making the sacrament weekly spiritual practice, things changed noticeably at Cowan Heights United Church. Christian education programs, Bible studies, book study, and small group ministry programs saw attendance spike from five or six members weekly to over 20 consistently. A push happened for more community outreach. People wanted to help United Church Incorporated Ministries such as Stella Circle and Social Enterprise and Bridges to Hope food bank. The congregation partnered with other ministries to cater meals for seniors, lunch ministries. The young adults group collected 50 bags of hygiene products for the Safe Harbor Outreach Project, which ministers to sex workers and women on the street. As the city opened more after the lockdown, they set up community gardens 
and built a bus shelter on the church property. They became a more high profile in their support for the LGBTQIA plus community. Dingwell credits coming together at the communion table with helping the congregation to unpack some of our ministries of inclusion. There's beauty in the idea of a community of faith welcoming members from diverse backgrounds with diverse life experiences coming together as equals to share a meal. He says it's also an opportunity for people to explore notions of identity and of being a sanctuary community that shows that God-centered space can be safe, inclusive, and genuinely welcoming to all. Making the communion table welcome to everyone embraced the idea of radical hospitality. It's created a worship environment to which visitors tend to want to return. Who doesn't like to come together to feel that they are accepted and welcome? Welcoming everyone who comes to worship makes a difference. Dingo continues, openness and willingness to try was an amazing quality here, which has expanded into all areas of our congregational life. Cowan Heights found new ways of welcoming and of offering their drinks of water. Much can happen with this symbolic and literal offering of that drink of water. We discover the hidden stories inside the obvious story. Maybe you remember the Genesis story. Abram and Sarai would not have had their son without Abram first offering water to the three strangers. It's not any hospitality that's just, oh well, that's what we should do. It's intentional, radical. It's hospitality that makes true welcome. Fill your summer with stories, the ones you share, the ones you hear from others, read about and watch, and look for the hidden stories within, the deeper meanings. Build relationships that can deepen and grow, whether celebrating, sharing birthday cake, grape juice, water, or any form of active ministries. Trust that genuine welcome always reveals there is so much love to share. Be providers of God's love. As we love others, we love God. Praise be to God and amen. Let us pray. Creator, call us to break down the walls that divide. Help us build bridges of understanding and compassion. Help us offer so much love and genuine welcome. Holy Comforter, we pray for those who are burdened in body, mind, or spirit. Compassionate friend, 
We pray for those who are afflicted with poverty, war, injustice, and the pain of grief and loss. Steadfast love. We pray for all those who live and work with inequity, for those struggling in decision-making and desiring purpose and fulfillment, for those who are fearful and feel unsafe to let their true lights shine. Fill us with safe space to be true to ourselves, to be authentic and to celebrate the beautiful beings you have made each of us to be. We pray for all those in positions of leadership, for equity in building relationships that build positive, healthy communities. We pray for all those on summer break, for rest and relaxation, for time with family and friends. Grant all safety and good health. We continue to pray for the work of our search community and your preparations for the minister that you call to Fort Massey. Guide and direct all in prayerful discernment. We pray for the summer worship with St. Matthew's and for all opportunities we share, knowing that there are many we carry on our hearts. Receive our joys and concerns as we offer them to you from our hearts. In your holy name we pray, amen. As we continue in gratitude and thanksgiving with so much love to share, we sing the hymn, Walk With Me, Voices United, 649, and this one we're doing, refrain, verse one, refrain, verse four, refrain, I think. Follow, follow the screen. <laughs> time in thanking our guest choir this morning. Thank you so much for your gifts and we hope you will come back and join us. Go now in peace. May the Creator, the Great Spirit, fill your hearts and minds with wisdom and your spirits with courage. As we experience this summer season, May we know the abundance of creation and the ways that we can be good stewards and caretakers. As we notice humanity, may we be good citizens and walk justly, seeking equity for all. 
as we feel the nudge of spirit, may we respond in love, welcome, and drink deeply of the cups of cold water we receive and generously give. God bless you, and amen.